So, oil change. This is a 1999 Sportsman 500, but this process would be applicable to you know a wide range of years and, and models, I would imagine. I'm gonna do what I would consider to be a complete oil change. Uh, most people start out just doing the basic, and, and my, myself included, I typically will just do the oil and filter. Um, but uh, in this one, that oil, I picked this up over the summer, and that oil filter says the, has a date on it of June of 2013, <laughs> seven years ago. I think it's time to, to do a thorough oil change. So I'll start out kind of with just the basic stuff that, that most people do. Get in here and, uh, and that's just draining the oil and changing the filter. That's, that's the most common deal. So your, your drain plug here. Oh, and again, I have all the plastics off on this this wheeler, um, which I, I have another video demonstrating that I took them all off in, in about 10 minutes. So if you're interested, take a peek at that. And of course, many, many other uh, Polaris videos. So, drain plug here. Starting with that, because that's kind of the low, low point in the system here. Get my pan up just in case it wants to shoot out of there. Let that drain out. That's some pretty old dark oil. It doesn't smell like gas or anything, it's just uh, old and a little bit on the sludgy side. Then, while that's draining, I'm gonna grab myself an oil filter wrench. Now, I just have a pliers type. I didn't have the band type that fit. There's many oil wrenches, whatever your preference is, you know, more power to you, have at it. Give it, and I'm just gonna crack this loose. You notice I have a towel down there. Because I figure it's probably going to dribble a bit upon the initial. I ran this a little bit too before I started this to, to help get any, uh, you know, work any particulates into the... So there you go. So a little bit of drainage. I'm just going to plop that in the pan. A little bit of drain there. Mess you, you want to catch with a towel there. So. After uh, letting that drain for a little while, maybe I'll clean this up real quick. Okay, so before putting any parts back on, you want to make sure you know everything's clean and looking good. And I'm using a Napa Gold filter for this machine, the 1358. But you can go to a Napa dealer and you just let them know what filter you, a Polaris brand you have on there, and they can cross-reference it, and they're readily available. Um, I've always had good luck with with uh, Napa filters. Um, as far as the oil goes, I use the PS4. It's just strongly recommended. It's a little more expensive, but it's just, you know, I understand, obviously, the seller of a product is going to try to sway you towards that. But guys that I know that have worked for Polaris, you know, in the past and no longer do, that's one thing that they're always adamant about is, just use the PS4, just use the oil that's recommended. This is an old, old wheeler, you know, uh, 21 years old. So there's no warranty issues or anything with that. So if you have a uh, machine that's under warranty, you know, make sure you're using the parts that they uh, suggest or require because that can get you into some warranty uh, void issues. You don't want to have that, that problem. So. Um, I've, I've always used the oil. It's a little more expensive. Um, I've, I've just got unconvincing feedback just across the board about that. They, they just swear to it. And I've also come across guys that feel very strongly that they've used equivalents with, with no uh, issues either. And, and I'm not here to, you know, I'm just sharing that with you. I personally just use the PS4. Then that way I know I got the right stuff and good to go. But the filter, um, I'm good with swapping that out and some other stuff as well. So before you put that on, you want to put a thin film of oil on there, screw that on, but real quick, before you put your plug back in, it's magnetic at the tip, at least mine is. You want to make sure there's no, you know, big old metal chips or any sign of, of something bad going on in your motor. It's an opportunity to, to kind of do a little inspection on stuff and I don't know well you can see that, but the magnetic tip there. Um, it's got a nylon washer inspect that that seems to be in pretty good shape i didn't have any leaks or anything so it's making good surface contact you know in the plug um, we'll put the filter on real quick show you that 
All right, so again, just dipping my finger in, in the oil that it's come out, just kind of putting a thin film, just coating that, that O-ring, you know, and inspect your surfaces here. Make sure there's the old O-ring didn't stick on there, which it can commonly do. Um, I've had that happen on automotive uh, applications more often than, than, well, I've never really had it happen on a four-wheeler, but just check, you know, look in there, inspect all that. You want to put that on hand tight, and then they say hand tight in about another quarter turn. So I just give it a good, a good crank on there to, to make sure that it, I'm good. And then, of course, after you refill your oil and you run it a little bit, you're going to check that. And, and obviously put your drain plug back in there when you're, when you're ready. I am going to take it to the next level here now and do something that a lot of people don't do. A lot of people do, but a lot of people it's not even on their radar. And I'll show you. I'm going to go around to the other side and underneath here. Alright, so the other part I'm talking about is the crankcase. And it's on, if you come around to the side where your pull start is, and you kind of, you go underneath and you see this, there's a slot here. Oh, well, you can see that on the camera, but um, you reach through that slot and up to see kind of next to your drive shaft there, next to the uh, universal joint. I'm trying to let that focus a little bit. You can see my wrench here, right there. Crack that. And I'm gonna hand loosen that. I'm actually gonna put that with my hand there and let that drain out. And I'll let it drain into a cup and I can kind of show you how much oil actually comes out of there. Um, I mean, I can tell you, it's about eight ounces. They say one cup roughly is still in the crankcase after you do an oil change to the point that I had demonstrated. And that's actually, you know, a considerable amount if you think about it. It's kind of messy. It's kind of draining a lot into the pan as well. But you can see that pouring out of there, I hope. It said eight ounces, but I think it might actually even be more than that. You know, like I said, a lot of people stop with the drain plug and the filter. And this oil has not been changed in so long, you know, seven plus years. Um, that I felt I would dive deep on this and do this. I don't always do this, but it's really probably a good idea too, because that's kind of a low point in your system. It's actually even lower than your oil reservoir. And, you know, sludge and stuff is gonna tend to uh, hang out there, you know, when things settle and build up, you know, and if you got anything bad going on in your engine, it's gonna reveal itself if you see metal chips in this oil and stuff. I mean, you'd probably know it if something that drafts was going on, but it's an opportunity again to really evaluate. So they said, the book says it's about a cup, eight ounces. Um, you're putting in 64 total, you know, with two quarts, a quart being 32. So that's an eighth of your oil. And to be honest with you, I, I don't remember how many ounces this cup is, but it's uh, pretty dang near full. So had I just stopped where I was at and just drained that oil, there's still this much more in there. You know, that's, that's quite a bit. I thought these were 16 ounce cups, but anyways, you can see that is full to the brim there, just about. I mean, not the brim, but it's pretty darn full. All right, and of course, before putting your plug back in, inspect it. This one actually has a crush washer on it. You know, so when you snug it down, you feel that washer kind of compress and crush and you know you're good. But it's in really good shape, to be honest with you. Just based on the history of this machine, I wouldn't be surprised if that's never been out before. You know, since the oil hadn't been changed in seven years, um, I'm putting a new belt on it uh, and doing this deep oil change and, and all that. You know, dealerships may regularly go to this level, but I know, you know, the average guy doing it himself you know, for a lot of people, it's probably off their radar. So I just thought I'd share that with you. And if you already knew about it, well, great, there you go. Um, I did uh, double check that cup. Uh, those are 18 fluid ounce cups. So that actually, I would say about 16 ounces came out of there, which if I'm not mistaken is two cups. I believe a cup is eight ounces. 
I have to double check that. <laughs> I'm pretty confident. Um, so yeah, so that was quite a bit of oil. So that's actually almost a quarter of the oil um, overall volume. So definitely worth doing. So the next thing I'm gonna do, go around back around to the other side. While that's all just draining and dripping and stuff, this is definitely gonna be a next level thing that you know not any, many people really wanna do. And I figured I'd at least demonstrate it for you so you can see what's going on in there. If you're interested, if you're not, you could be done here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to open it up. I wanna see what's going on in there. Um, I know there's a screen filter in there from one of, I believe the return line. I don't know if it's a supply line or return line. Um, oh, real quick, very important before I forget. You need to reprime your oil pump. And to do so, I will demonstrate later, but to do so, you need to uh, clamp off your breather hose, which is up here on the top. And I believe there's a couple of slits in it too to relieve some pressure. That hose on the back there, that goes all the way, routes back to under your seat to the air filter. And so you need to uh, clamp that off, put your machine in neutral, and then start it, it says, and then let it run for, I believe it's 45 seconds. But when I demonstrate that, I will clarify, you know, those finer details. And then, and then the uh, oil pump is primed. Um, oh, and also I clarified the oil filter. It says, you know, making contact and then give it another half a turn. I think I said a quarter to half. You know, most people that have done oil changes kind of have a feel for that. But if, if it's new to you, that's, that's the, the ruling from the ma owner's manual. Um, so I'm gonna take this thing off. And to do so, it will be, uh, it'll be a bolt here and a bolt here. And there's a nut on the back. I'm gonna take those two out, that'll free it up, and then I need to re uh, remove the supply line and return line, and then the, uh, the breather hose up top there as well. And then it should be free. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts on there. It looks like holding it together kind of like a clamshell, and I'll just pull it apart, and I'm curious to see what'll be inside there. Um, and when I, I believe when I pull out the return line, I don't know if it's return line or supply line. I would imagine the return line. I believe there's a screen filter that I can clean out as well. And again, I'm, I'm going way above and beyond. One, I have the time. I have another machine if I need one. It's, you know, mid-November, and I'm just getting this thing ready for next season, just going through everything on it. So, so I'll pop that off, and we'll demonstrate that for you, show you what's going on inside. All right, so that's out. So just real quick, there is... A bolt here and a bolt here with a nut on the back. I had to undo that. Then from there, I had to remove the breather tube. This whole line goes all the way, all the way to the under the seat to the air filter, and that screws in the back there. It's just a plastic fitting. Um, and then you have your your feed line and your return line. Make sure you don't lose your crush washers that are on there. Yeah, one up top here and one down there, and I think I used a three-quarter on that, if I'm not mistaken. But again, you know, just try your sockets and see what works for you. Um, that's just a little nipple there that it sits in a rubber grommet. So here's what I was talking about, about a screen filter inside. Where this, I believe this is the return line. I honestly, I'd have to look. One on the top and one on the bottom. Um, the, I'd have to clarify that, but one's return, one's, one's feed. Then this bottom one, I had to hold this and then turn, crank that off. I think I used a, a 16 mil, no, 19 millimeter on that. And again, yours may differ. And three quarter on that, probably a metric closer size to that, but three quarter worked. Took that off. Then I loosened this and I took this off. Again, this is on the bottom, on the back. Took this off and then this is that screen filter I was talking about. And I can see there's quite a bit of sludge and stuff on there. I don't know well you can see that, but you know, you, now is the time to clean that up. And who knows, it could just be all kinds of stuff. It could be crud from the oil filter. It could be crud that got in just, you know, from uh, when you, somebody filled it. Who knows, but now is the time to clean it. And again, I don't do this every time I change my oil. In fact, this is the first time I've actually taken one of these out. And I thought I would uh, check it out and share it with you guys because, you know, not everybody dives that deep on it. So now I'm gonna take this cover off. 
And I'll show you that. I won't put you through taking all the bolts out, but I'll get them all loose and then I'll lift that off and we can see what's going on inside there. So real quick, one thing I, I have to emphasize again is I, I feel like I maybe didn't emphasize it enough when I emptied the crankcase, is make, the manual says that um, anytime you do anything more than just emptying this drain plug and the filter, meaning if you disconnect any of your supply or return lines off the back, it says you need to prime your oil pump. So make sure you do that. Um, and I'll demonstrate that here at the end of the video. But some of you may have got what you want out of this already and you're done, so. Um, but if you're still here with me, watch for that here in a minute. We'll, we'll get to that. But first I'm gonna open this thing up here and I'll show you what's going on inside. All right, so I've taken all the bolts out uh, and we'll pop this apart. There's a gasket in there so that will, you know, be a little stubborn. So that's pretty much what you got, you know? It's your oil reservoir. Um, you got a couple of chambers in here, but it kind of works its way through. I think this top part up here is pretty much hollow and that's the breather apparatus. Um, and then from here down is your oil. I think just through deductive reasoning, I think that that's the bottom one is the supply line. And I say that just because there's crud in here and there was crud on the outside of the screen, you know, that stuck through here, this side of the screen. There's nothing on the inside of the screen as though grungy oil was coming back and through that screen. Otherwise, you know, the, the inside of this versus the outside would be full of crud and there's nothing in there. It was all on the outside. So I think this is the supply line, but again, that's not that important to be honest with you, but just sharing that. It has not, no bearing on what I'm gonna do here, or what I'm trying to show you. And again, I'm not, I wasn't even trying to show you how to take this out and all that stuff. I just intended on cleaning that screen and wanted to see what was going on in here. And also you can see that, uh, you know, your drain plug is right across from that, but it still didn't drain all the oil out. You can see I still got, I don't know why you can see that pooling in there, but there's still a little bit of oil in there. So I'm gonna dump that out. I'm gonna wipe this thing out all real good. Make sure the gasket's good, put it back together and put all of it together. All right, so that's all cleaned out. Gonna put that back together. Gasket was still pretty good, so. Gonna go with it, kind of cleaned everything off real good. And... I believe the torque on these is 20 to 23 or 24. I'll do about 20 and see how it feels. Missing one, there it is. Just to clarify, again, I did 20 on the bolts on the front. Um, the screen filter fitting says 14 to 17 foot-pounds. Uh, your drain plug here and on the crankcase are both 14 foot-pounds. Um, and then putting these fittings back in on also 14 foot-pounds, 14 to 17 on those, I believe. But make sure you got that crush washer on there, that brass washer that's on there because I have you know the one that here that fell off from the top fitting which is still connected to the machine and I found it easier to take to take this off from the oil pump and then pull the tank out and pull this all off but again I'm not demo I wasn't intending to demonstrate this aspect of it I just wanted to show you an uh, an, a complete oil change and then I took it to the next level by cracking this thing open and cleaning it all out and everything and, and just figured I'd share that with you because not everybody does that. So now you know what's going on in there. Um, so I'm gonna put this all back together, put this back in, put my, uh, I believe, feed line, exchange line, breather hose, you know, and then bolt it back in here and, and here and make sure my plug is is in and torqued 14 foot-pounds, also on the crankcase. Uh, hook my oil line back up, fill it with oil, um, and then do the, do the uh, oil pump priming. And I'll demonstrate that here for you in a minute if you care to see that. If not, uh, thanks for watching and, um, and 
of course, subscribe. That always helps, encourages more videos in the future. And the only one making money off this stuff at this point is YouTube. So I'm not trying to, to be greedy with you or anything, but uh, uh, subscriptions can equate to more views and all those kind of things. So it all, it all in the end, is, is, is good for me, of course, but and encouraging for me, of course. But uh, my main goal here is to, I'm doing these projects anyways. It's nice to share stuff with, with people that are trying to do the same thing, but I definitely appreciate your subscriptions. So um, check out the playlists. There's lots of other stuff on there. I, I, lots of Polaris videos, but then also a lot of stuff just of Alaska wildlife um, adventures. I got a few repairs I've done on a motorhome, um, things on there and there's many more to come. Um, I'm gonna do, I don't know if you noticed when I was changing the oil on here, the belt is off, I'm just waiting for the new belt, but I have already scuffed up those, uh, you know, the clutches and wiped them all down real good with, with uh, rubbing alcohol. You know what, real quick though, before, bonus for you, right before I uh, do the, um, the oil pump prime, I'm just going to pop an air filter in here real quick and might as well show if there's anybody that's looking how to do that. So just one second here, reposition my camera. So everybody knows how to take your seat off, I would hope. By now, if you're doing this and you don't know how to take your seat off, well, you might want to consult a professional. <laughs> but anyways, um, real quick, once you got your seat off, you'll see underneath there, take these clamps off, six of them on mine. You know, they may vary per model. Um, take that off. There's a hose clamp type clamp on here. I hit that with the screwdriver. I already loosened it a bit, but get it the rest of the way so I can take that off. So you got your filter and there's a pre-filter over it. This pops off. Hose clamp, because I'm gonna need it. This pre-filter, which is just an oily cloth. And that one's in need of replacement for sure. So if you're wondering what it looks like, <laughs> one looks like. And I, again, I'm doing all this basic stuff over the winter, so, you know, that's something that I'm gonna do. Here's a brand new one. You know, it's so white, it's throwing the white balance off. It's so clean. You know, you got your, your uh, end that's solid, open end that obviously goes on. I'm gonna put that pre-filter on. That's again, just an oily, I don't know if it's fiberglass or what the actual material is, but it kind of stops any of the bigger stuff and, and it'll actually, you can take that off and clean it to, uh, you know, get better performance and longer life on your, out of your filter. I can't tell you how many, how many rigs I've seen without one of these on it. You know, people just, either it gets trashed and they figure, oh, I'll just, I don't need that. And then they put, uh, you know, just put the filter back in. Anyways, get that straightened out there, sorry. Now that's taking a little bit. You can figure that out, I'm sure. Make that all pretty. There we go. So that's on there, put the hose clamp on there. Accordingly, I wanna situate it so I have access to the screw. And then you just kinda of snap that on. Make sure it's down on far enough to be behind this. There's like a little foot down there that it presses up against and that kind of holds it up against there too. That's how you know it's on all the way. And it kind of rests on there, you know, behind that lip. You know, you got your you got filter then a step down to this diameter and that diameter kind of sets on the foot there. Tighten up your screw and you should be set. But again, most people know how to do this, but I was just going to do it as I was ending and I figured bonus for anybody that's interested. Oop, I overshot that. There we go. So that's pretty good. And then you want to put your cover back on, which is simply this. I say simply, but it's giving me a little bit of grief. There we go. And then put your clamps back on there. And there you go, one more maintenance thing done. So one other uh, little side tangent nugget, I'm not replacing it at this time, I just wanted to point it out to you guys. But you know, you have the breather hose line going from the top of your reservoir to your uh, air filter box. Um, 
And then coming back from the air filter box is this, uh, it's an inline breather filter. And I don't know if you can see how well you can see that, but it's just a plastic filter. Almost, it looks like a fuel filter. Um, but uh, again, I'm not going to replace it right now, but just wanted to point that out to you. It is probably a relatively cheap item maintenance thing you can, can replace. Um, you know, the, the large filter I replaced earlier in the box is pretty much a pre-filter for this. And you would never want to, you know, run without that. And this, so I, I'd probably check that out, but I won't put you through that. You know, you just take off two hose clamps, pop that out, put a new one in. Just make sure, it is directional. Make sure you uh, put that in according to the instructions. But anyways, so on to the prime and the oil pump. All right, so I put everything back together after cleaning it. I, I just, I'll recap it for you. Uh, but again, this video was not necessarily to show you how to take out and put in your oil reservoir and all that. It was mainly to do a, a deep dive oil change, I guess I would call it. So, um, new filter. Um, after taking this off, I put it back on. On the, the inlet on the back, I believe it's the... Uh, I'm sorry, the outlet for the oil, the bottom one, that had the screen filter on it. When you put that fitting with the screen on it, you're supposed to put, uh, they said Loctite PST 505. I actually used Permatex thread sealant with PTFE. The manual says uh, S, uh, PST 505 or equivalent or PTFE -E sealant. And Permatex, uh, PTFE um, meets the, the requirements to the best of my knowledge. Time will tell, I'll just kind of keep an eye on it if it leaks or if oil deteriorates that over time, then I'll obviously have to address that. But it's telling you what I did. Um, so you just dig, dig into the information, you know, available to you to uh, see. I've read lots of threads that have indicated, um, you know, a lot of guys are just using like standard thread lock and stuff, um, but you know, I like to use what they say so I don't have to go back and do it again. Um, so, anyways, two bolts holding the, the reservoir back on. Outlet, inlet on top, both cranked down to 14 pounds, uh, foot pounds. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I rehooked up, you know, the one hose I had disconnected here, the top one, which was goes to the bottom there. And then also, of course, put the plug back in. It's so hard to see here, I realize. But put the crankcase plug back in there, 14 foot-pounds. And then you can see the back side of this stuff too. I don't know how well you can, but line on the bottom, line on the top. And then re-ran the breather hose, you know, back to the air box. Goes around, around the front and hooks up to the top of your reservoir. So about three inches back from there, there's that slit in there. And I'll show you that real quick. So here's that slit a little bit from the end. It's, it's almost invisible, but if you squeeze the hose, you can see it. And when you clamp, you need to clamp, you know, from the con between the connection and there. And to, to prime your oil pump. A um, couple things I've come across and want to cover real quick regarding that. Uh, I was reading a few threads about emptying the crankcase. A lot of people implied that it's not done, that they don't do it very often, obviously with a regular change. They're, even, they're saying even in the shops, if you take it into a dealer, they're likely not doing that. And I, I'm sure you could get a mixed bag of a feedback on that. Some guys would say, oh, absolutely, and other guys go, oh, no. One guy indicated that, he said, they don't do it, it's not worth it, because you only get like an ounce of oil out of there. I think we've proved different. <laughs> the manual indicates a cup. I interpreted that as measurement of a cup of eight ounces, but maybe they meant a 16-ounce cup, because <laughs> I got about 16 ounces out of there, which is, you know, two cups and about a quarter of your oil, you know, total volume. Now, with that in mind, 
everything always says two quarts, two quarts, two quarts for these. And I'm wondering if after I put two quarts in, having to replenish the crankcase as well, you know, with um, 16 ounces of oil, if two quarts will be enough. I'm wondering if two quarts is the standard for a uh, drain the reservoir and the filter, uh, change the filter and, and draw on the line there, which again is very common. I certainly have done it more often than not. Again, th this machine had, you know, a, a way overdue oil change on it, you know, seven years and, um, and who knows how, how well it was done when it was done. So I figured I'd just dive in deep because I got the time and everything and then share that with you guys. And you can just pick the pieces out of here that work for you and do it accordingly. But I'm gonna fill up this reservoir in, uh, with two quarts of oil here and we'll get that going and then, then I'll talk about the priming of the oil pump. So what it says is pinching off that hose Letting it run for about 45 seconds. I'll tell you exactly what it says in the book. I'm going to read it to you so there is no misinterpretation. It says, oil pump priming procedure. This priming procedure must be performed whenever the oil hose connection between the oil tank and the pump inlet has been disconnected. And that's that bottom one with the screen on it. So what I had said was anytime you do anything more than just drain the reservoir and change the filter. But, you know, to be honest with you, there's no harm in doing a priming procedure. If, if in doubt, I can't imagine that it's going to hurt for you to run it for 45 seconds with that hose clamped off. Okay, so it says clamp or pinch off the vent line approximately two inches from the oil tank to avoid the end of the oil tank vent fitting and the, vents lines, the vent lines pressure relief slit, which is that slit I showed you just a little while ago. And it's very invisible. You gotta kinda work your, the hose a little bit to have it reveal itself. And run engine 45 to 60 seconds. Remo remove the vent line clamp. The oil pump will now be properly primed and ready for field operation. So there you go. That's right out of the, right out of the manual. Uh, Polaris manual. So that quartz in there. I'll put in another one. I know I'm bad when I'm trying to multitask and fill you with information at the same time. I apologize. I know this is kind of a long video, and I, I, I hopefully uh, it's it's been you know worth your your time here to to be checking it out. Oops. Look at that, spilling oil on my freshly cleaned reservoir. I'll have to clean that up real good. So I'm suspecting, just on some of the stuff I've read from others, that after priming it and filling the crankcase back up and stuff, it's going to need uh, a little more oil, but we'll see. And you're supposed to check your oil with the dipstick all the way screwed in, um, not just, you know, not just setting it in there until it hits the shoulder and then checking it. And you need to go all screw it in to check your oil level. All right, so I'm gonna pause this for a second just so you don't have to wait for this bottle to empty. All right, so I have a, a hemostat on there clamped on the hose. I don't know if you can see that. Going back behind there. Kind of hard to see through here. Yeah, you really can't, but hemostat clamp on the hose. You know, between that, that vent slit and the actual uh, connection. Um, says put it in neutral and put the parking brake on and let it run for 45 to 60 seconds. I gotta open the garage door real quick. Right, so I'm in neutral, parking brake is set. I'm gonna start it up, let it run for 45 to 60 seconds. Again, I have that hose clamped off. There you can see what that uh, primary clutch spinning looks like with the cover off and no belt. And then uh, it says you're good to go after you've primed that, like that. 
And then if you were to not to have a need, if you were not priming your pump, if you did not disconnect any lines, if all you did is empty your reservoir and change the filter, then all it says to do is let it run for a couple of minutes, a minute or two, and then uh, just check all your connections for any leaks or anything. Okay, well, that's that. Take off the clamp here. All right, so I had checked the oil after doing the priming process and it was right up to the very bottom of the normal. Check it again. Again, when you check your oil, you're supposed to screw that all the way in. These threads are kind of funky, so I usually turn it like I'm taking it out till they kind of line up and then start screwing it in. Let's see where we're at. I ran it for a couple of minutes. Didn't want to put you through that. So I don't, I don't know if you can see, but it's just above the bottom normal line. You got, you know, add this window here is normal. And it's, I don't know, like a eighth of an inch above that line. So it, it could use a little bit. I'll ride a little, you know, and monitor that. I, I like to tend to fill stuff up on the, kind of on the high side, uh, just, you know, I, I guess I'm just thinking that the more fluid there is in there, the more heat can dissipate as it flows through here and, you know, less wear and tear friction, all that. But I guess the arguments could be made the other way too, that maybe if there's too much fluid in there, you're not allowing as much cooling because of the mass of all the oil. But anyways, you guys can comment about that all day long in the, in the comments if you want, just thinking out loud. But I tend to fill stuff on the higher side, you know, kind of in the middle to three quarter of that range. But, uh, but that all looks good. That's pretty much it. If, uh, and of course, go around and check for leaks. I've checked everything. Um, you know, I checked, you know, my line connections in the back, the hose connection, uh, the plug on the other side, this plug, everything looks good. I'm um, just gonna clean everything up here real good, wrap it up, and I will, you know, check tomorrow and see if there's any drips anywhere on the floor or, or anything. But two quarts did it. I, I really didn't think it would. I thought I was gonna have to add a, a bit more. In fact, I have a quart sitting here on the seat ready to go. But uh, anyways, hope that's helpful for you. Um, you know, I, I'm sure I didn't cover every last thing on there did my best with, it was quite a bit to cover, and I kind of went off on a few tangents as I went <laughs> with the air filter, but um, threw that bonus in there. But it, it, you know, there, I also went above and beyond what I would normally do. You know, if I were to do this again, um, just you know what I call a deep dive oil change, I guess I would do the reservoir, the filter, and the crankcase, and move on, refill everything. Then I, I don't believe you need to prime it then per the manual. Um, you know, cleaning that filter out, that screen filter on the, the oil line, you know, that, that's a rare thing that you need to do. But I gotta tell you, I don't know how well it represented it in the video, but I had quite a bit of uh, crud in there. It looked like little, you know, pieces of plastic from, I don't know, some fitting somewhere in the assembly. Um, I don't know what it all, all the sources could have been, but it wasn't just sludge or grit. You know, there were large pieces of, of stuff in there. You know, it could have been original factory stuff that just kind of works its way through the system after assembly. I don't know. But anyways, it was worth it to me to, to open that up, and I just thought I'd share with you guys what that looked like inside there. Anyways, so babbling. Um, if you liked it, like it, and you know, and of course, subscribe. I'm gonna make a lot more videos. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. It, some people don't understand that. And if you don't, and if you don't want to be notified about more videos, just turn the notification off. But uh, you know, YouTube is making money off of of uh, running ads on on the videos. And until I have a minimum number of subscribers you know, they don't share that with you. And, you know, in the long run, it would be nice in my retirement to get a check for five bucks every month or something, but I need to get the uh, subscribers. So subscribe. And uh, there'll be a lot more videos to come. And if, 
And if you haven't already, ch check out the Polaris playlist. I have tons of videos on there uh, for Polaris. Well, not tons, but quite a few, a good handful of them. This was kind of going back from some of the stuff I'd done a little more basic because I knew I was going to dive deep into it. And, you know, I thought I would share that because I haven't seen anybody do any of this stuff other than just the basic oil change basically over the years. And somebody asked in the comments if I had one and was I going to do one. So I was doing this. So here we are. So check out the channel, check out the playlists, all kinds of stuff, Polaris stuff, Alaska stuff, wildlife stuff. Uh, motorhome stuff, all kinds of things. So check it out, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.